Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my entire Chanel lipstick collection. I usually store these in this little drawer right here. It sits on the bottom shelf over in this corner. That way I have all of my Chanel lipsticks in one place. I just counted them and I have 48 Chanel lipsticks. So today I'm going to swatch all of them for you, show you all of the colors. I'm gonna talk about my favorite shades, my favorite formulas, and then at the end I will have to do a small declutter. Nothing too crazy. I already did an organization and declutter of the rest of my lipsticks, but I wanted to wait to really dive into the Chanel so I could share my entire collection first. The formula I have the most of might surprise you. I have 10 Rouge Allure lipsticks. This is a very standard creamy bullet lipstick from Chanel. I have seven Le Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Longwear lipsticks, six Rouge Allure Lac, five Rouge Coco Flash, four Rouge Coco Bloom, four Rouge Allure L'Extre, three Rouge Allure Ink, three Rouge Allure Ink Fusion, three Rouge Coco Balm, two Rouge Coco, one La Rouge Crayon de Couleur, and one Lip and Cheek Balm. And I actually miscounted. I found one other Rouge Allure L'Extre, so my total is actually 49 Chanel lipsticks. If it didn't make sense to you before, now it should be abundantly clear why I have put myself on a very strict no-buy when it comes to lipsticks. And this is just my Chanel collection, and I am now in year two of lipstick no buy slash low buy, but I want to talk about my favorite formula. This is the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue, and if you are familiar with my channel, you know I talk about these all the time. I think this is a luxury beauty staple. It's definitely one of the best Chanel beauty products, but it's also just the best lipstick formula in general across brands. They are so long wearing yet comfortable. They don't dry out the lips, they're transfer resistant, and they are consistently reliable. I truly depend on these lipsticks, which is why I take them everywhere with me. I will take them on trips. Doesn't matter if I'm going somewhere special, if it's just a Zoom call, if I'm going to lunch, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm wearing a La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue lipstick. They're pretty user-friendly, but just in case you are not familiar with these, you have to apply the liquid pigment side first. So this goes on like any other liquid lipstick. You can get a pretty precise line. I do use lip liner with these. And occasionally I will fill in my lips, but it's very important to remember not to apply these on top of anything else. Like you can't go in with a lip balm or a lip mask blot and then apply this. Your lip has to be completely dry. You can't have anything on them. That way the pigment can really grip the lip. Once that dries down for a couple seconds, I mean 15, 20 seconds, it starts to get a little bit tacky and then you have to apply the gloss this gloss. It's different from other glosses. I don't know how or why, but it just is, trust me. If you go on top with an outside gloss, it will still look very pretty, but you're not going to get the longevity you will get if you apply this gloss that comes with it. Some people prefer a matte lipstick, still apply the gloss because the gloss is what keeps it feeling hydrated and smooth. If you skip the gloss, your lips are going to feel really dry and uncomfortable. This is the shade that I have been living in lately. It's called Endless Pink. It was limited edition, so unfortunately this is no longer available, but it looks extremely similar to Light Rose. So that's what I've been linking down in the description box of my videos. And I am scraping the tube. So I will most likely get to add this to my empties bin before the end of the month. And when I replace it, I will be replacing it with Light Rose. This is Chic Beige. This was another one of the limited edition shades. Very similar to Mary Rose. They aren't quite the same, but I think it would give you a pretty similar look on the lips. Chic Beige is so light that I do have to use a lip liner underneath just to give it a little extra boost of color. This is Light Mauve, or Mauve, a beautiful light berry pink. This is a gorgeous everyday color. I need to start wearing this more. As soon as I finish Endless Pink, I'm gonna throw this in my purse. Another quick note about this lipstick formula, like a lot of other liquid lipsticks, when they dry down, they will oxidize and get a little bit deeper. So if you like the look of the shade in the tube, just imagine it on the lips a smidge deeper. Not too much, but a little bit. This is Intense Caramel, a beautiful deep nude. I think this is the perfect fall winter nude lip. This is Intense Rosewood, a really gorgeous, vampy berry. This is so beautiful for fall winter. This is Burning Red, a very warm-toned red lipstick. 
This is Passionate Red. It's more blue-based, more of a Bordeaux red. My second favorite formula is the Rouge Coco Bloom lipstick. This is a traditional bullet lipstick. It's a little bit slimmer than the Rouge Coco and the Rouge Allure. But what I like about it is that it's almost like a lip butter. It feels incredibly hydrating. They just glide on the lips. It almost melts with the heat of your lips and they are so pigmented. And it looks very opaque. When you apply this and you really only need one coat, you can't really see any cracks or crevices in the lip. Everything just looks very smooth and they feel really great. So that's why I love the Rouge Coco Bloom. This is one of my favorite statement lips. It's a perfect special occasion pink. It's 126 season. 124 Merveille is more of a soft everyday pink. If you're kind of sick of nudes, maybe you're in a nude rut and you're looking to switch it up, I think this is a really pretty color. 116 Dream is the perfect pinky nude. 110 Chance is a slightly lighter, slightly warmer peachy nude. Both of these would be beautiful every single day. The Rouge Allure lipstick formula is the classic Chanel lipstick. When I think about a Chanel lipstick, just sort of in general, even though I prefer the previous two formulas, this is what comes to mind. It comes in the little clicky packaging where you just kind of push the top and it has a little spring in there and it pops right up. These have been around forever and I doubt they are going anywhere. In fact, Chanel loves Rouge Allure so much. This is typically the formula they come out with for their holiday collection, which is how I've acquired so many of them because it's a nice lipstick, but it's not as long wearing as the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue, and it's also not as buttery and hydrating as the Rouge Coco Bloom. So as much as I like them, I don't really grab these as often as I should. You will be able to find some of the classic shades in Rouge Allure, like Pirate. A typical Rouge Allure lipstick retails for $42. You do have to pay more for the gold trim. This is the holiday packaging, so these retail for $45. And they've come out with these for the past two years. This is 127 Rouge Dor, a beautiful holiday red with a slight gold sheen to it. This is 827 Rouge Magnifique. Sadly, as you can see, this one got squished in the cap a little bit. This is a really pretty vibrant orange color. This is 847 Rouge Majestueux. It's a deep vampy berry red. This is 117 or Cure Vray. This is 837 Rouge Spectaculaire, another really pretty holiday red shade. This is 107 or Beige. This is a really pretty nude. Similar to the red, it has a gold sheen to it. Not glitter, not chunky, not uncomfortable. You can't really even see the sheen. You have to look so close at the tube to be able to see it. This is 237 Beige Ardent. This is a Rouge Allure Velvet. So this is actually the matte formula of Rouge Allure. This is one of the number five lipsticks from last holiday. This is 176 Independent. The packaging is limited edition, but I believe this shade is always available. And then I have two red lipsticks that came in the special limited edition red lacquered packaging. Both of these are extremely old. In fact, this lipstick was the number one de Chanel. It's so old that the label is gone from the bottom of the lipstick. But this is the color. I remember thinking it was really pretty. And then this is shade number eight. I don't remember when this launched. I believe it was called number eight because Coco Chanel was born in August. I think it was some sort of birthday celebratory lipstick. My second favorite liquid lipstick formula from Chanel behind the Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue is the Rouge Allure Lac. Can't remember, I think it's maybe been two years since they came out with these. I really like this formula and I don't know if what happened to it. I know it's still available, but I don't see them bringing out new shades. It launched, it was really exciting, and then I don't think they've really done much with it since the initial launch. But I purchased six shades at the time and I really like it. It goes on almost like, I wanna say it's maybe the lip vinyl from YSL. It's as if 
they took the liquid lipstick side and the gloss and they combined them into one tube, one product. So you don't have to do two steps because it's kind of shiny and it still maintains a little bit of a slip. This does not dry down to a matte finish, which is why it's my second favorite liquid lipstick formula. I also think the packaging is very luxe. I like how you have the gold CC logo on top and the black ombre packaging. It looks very sleek. This is shade 60 in Flexible. Now this goes on very sheer and it has a little bit of a gold sheen. You could wear this alone, but this is going to look best as a lipstick topper on top of something else or maybe on top of a lip liner. This is shade 62 still. This is going to be your perfect everyday nude option. I'm so happy I'm going through all of these lipsticks because I'm reminded of all of the shades that I didn't even remember I had, like this one. This is shade 61 Continuous. This is going to be a light peach. This is 82 Beige Confidential, another warm peachy pink. This is 84 Rose Ambiguous. This is a gorgeous everyday rose color. If you are done with light nudes and you want something that stands out, gives you a bit of a pop, I think this is really pretty. And this is shade 70, Immobile. This is one of my favorite bold standout pinks. It is such a fun color. And if you don't like reds during the holidays, I think this would be a fun holiday lipstick. Over the years, I've ended up with quite a few Rouge Coco Flash lipsticks. I have five of them, and I know this is a fan favorite, so what I'm going to say might be a bit controversial. Unless there is a particular shade that you love and that is your tried and true go-to, these are okay. They're not my favorite lipstick formula from Chanel. I don't think they really stand out. There's not a lot of notable points about them. Some of the shades are really nice but they're kind of inconsistent. When they first went from Rouge Coco Shine to Rouge Coco Flash, I remember swatching them all and some of them were very sheer and others were incredibly pigmented, but there wasn't really a rhyme or reason as to why some of them gave you great color payoff and others didn't. Now, the Rouge Coco Flash is meant to be sheer. It's meant to be like a soft wash of color. This is more of a minimal, natural makeup look. So I understand their appeal. I guess it's just not really my style. This is 168 Halo. This is more of a sheer balm. It has a little bit of an iridescent sheen to it. This has to be the most popular Rouge Coco Flash, 54 Boy. This has always been a top seller. It's a sheer nude. It almost looks like you're not wearing anything at all. This is 132 Flushed, a warm peachy pink. This is a perfect everyday pink. This is 146 Dazzle, a bright, vibrant orange. This is one of the more pigmented Rouge Coco flashes. And this is 136 Coco Club. This was, I believe, a Black Friday launch a couple years ago. I have three Rouge Allure Ink and three Rouge Allure Ink Fusion lipsticks. And I remember when the Ink Fusion launched, there was a bit of confusion because they're basically the same. The Rouge Allure Ink Fusion is, I guess, maybe a bit more intense pigment, but Rouge Allure Ink was intended to be very intense as well. These both dry down to have more of a matte finish, so I like them, but if I'm going to wear a Rouge Allure Ink or Ink Fusion, I'm definitely topping it off with a gloss. These Rouge Allure Inks are pretty old, so I think I'm going to end up decluttering a couple of them. They came out with metallic shades. This was a long time ago. The Rouge Allure Ink has the gold top and the Ink Fusion has the black top. That's basically the only difference between them and the shades are different. So here I have 208 metallic red, very pretty. This is 202 metallic beige. This was more of a topper because I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't want to wear a gold lipstick on its own. It goes on a little bit more sheer, but the red does not go on that sheer. And then this is 232 Posy. I'm trying to rack my brain and remember if I purchased them all together or not. Doesn't smell bad. It looks okay. In the Rouge Allure Ink Fusion, this is 806 Pink Brown. This is 822 Deep Pink. 
and this is 836 Idealique. A bold, powerful red lip. This is a stunning color. I have three Rouge Coco Balm lipsticks. I love this white and gold packaging. It looks very chic, very sleek. Perfect for summertime. This formula is pretty comparable to some of the Rouge Coco Flash lipsticks. Feels really great on the lips. Is it the most pigmented? No, but it's not meant to be. This is a tinted lip balm, but maybe a step up from that. If you're looking for something very minimal, very natural, maybe an everyday lipstick, something that you can just dab on with your fingers, a pool day lipstick, a beach lipstick, this is perfect. This is 914 Natural Charm. This is 918 My Rose. This is 916 Flirty Coral. I have two Rouge Coco lipsticks. This is 402 Adrian and 496 Tendress. Adrian is one of my all-time favorite nude lipsticks from Chanel. I remember falling in love with this shade years ago when I worked at the Chanel counter in Nashville. And this is so old. I believe this came from Nashville. And I still have probably half of the lipstick left. It's so sad. I've held on to it because I love this color and I don't want to be without it. But at the same time, it's so old. I think I need to just come to my senses, let it go. I haven't been buying lipsticks, so if I can go through some of the lipsticks in my current collection, then this would be one that I would certainly replace in the future. The Rouge Coco lipstick formula is very basic. It's not quite as intensely pigmented as the Rouge Allure. It's not really long lasting. This is also a very classic bullet lipstick. And you have a lot of really classic shades like Adrian, Suzanne, Antoinette, Michelle, Arthur, Dimitri, Carmen, Etienne, Cecil, Marie, Edith. These are all people who played a role in Gabrielle Chanel's life and now they have a lipstick named after them. I think that's a pretty cool story. And then 496 Tendress, this was a limited edition shade that launched as part of the spring makeup collection, I believe last year. I have four Rouge Allure L'Extre lipsticks. I believe this is their latest formula launch. The formula is great. The packaging is cool. It's the first refillable lipstick from Chanel. In my full review, I did note that the little refills, even though they are $2 less expensive, they come with not that much product and you actually have to pay more for the full size tube and you don't get very much lipstick so i think this is one of the worst values from chanel maybe that feels a little bit nitpicky but i don't think it is if i'm purchasing a new chanel lipstick i want the same amount of product that i'm used to getting i think it is a little bit deceitful on their part you do have a higher likelihood of maybe going through the lipstick because you have less, but do you really want to pay a little bit more for the full size tube and get less lipstick? It's odd to me. And another thing I ran into just today was that I had these in the drawer and I had taken this out, the actual tube, so that I could use the lipstick. I had put it in one of my purses and I couldn't find it. I obviously was able to locate it, but had I lost the tube, I would have been out of luck because you can't just use the refills on their own. They will not just twist up. You have to have at least one of the full components and then you can, you know, replace it. I love the idea of refillable packaging, especially from a luxury brand. I know a lot of luxury brands are starting to get into that. Hermes, Dior, Charlotte Tilbury has been doing it for a while. So it's nice that Chanel is finally starting to come aboard with all of these trends and beauty, I just wish it wasn't at the customer's expense. You can love luxury products and appreciate the quality and the branding and all of the little details that Chanel will give you, but still want, you know, not necessarily a value, but you want to know that you're not getting less product for more money. I mean, that's just foolishness. This is shade 812 Beige Brew. This is 858 Rouge Royal. This is 822 Rose Supreme. This is 814 Beige Imperial. And the final two lip products I have here to talk about before I start applying all of these lipsticks to my lips are these. This is the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Lip and Cheek Balm. 
I have shade 2, Healthy Pink. Last time I checked, this was sold out, which made me very sad. It's really pretty. I'm not a huge pot person. I don't like lip cheek products usually, but this color is so nice. It looks beautiful on the lips. So I will take my little nail and scrape it out and I will make sure I use this up. This goes on like the Rouge Coco Balm. So if you hate the idea of a pot, but you want something similar, the Rouge Coco Balm would be a great option. And then this, I'm not sure they still have these. This is the La Rouge Crayon de Color in shade 27 Bois Rose. Oh, it's old. <laughs> it is so old. I don't remember when I got this. I feel like it was in Miami. Maybe it was part of a spring collection. I think I purchased this from Nordstrom. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It's a very pretty color. I don't love the crayons. I know they tried to make the crayons happen. They even had a little pen. Do you remember? They called it the, it might have just been La Rue Stilo. The crayon is nice. The formula is okay, but it, you get this rounded top and then, I don't know, it's just not that easy to apply because you can't be very precise there's no edge there to create a nice line around the lips. So I never really grabbed this. That is my entire Chanel lipstick collection. In the end, I only got rid of four lipsticks. That's not bad at all. I still have plenty of lipsticks left. And this serves as a really great reminder as to what shades I already own. That way I can use that information going forward. I don't plan on purchasing any more lipsticks through the end of the year at least. I'll probably continue my no buy low buy of lipsticks into 2023 but thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and you liked seeing what these lipstick shades look like on the lips and you found it helpful to hear about the different formulas if you liked the video give it a thumbs up leave me your comments questions down below let me know in the comment section what is your number one favorite lipstick shade Drop me a comment, we'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.